Welcome to the Bad Roman Podcast. On this show, we talk with veterans, community leaders, Christians, and non-Christians as we explore the entanglement of Christians with the state. The Bad Roman Project was created out of the firm belief that as Christians, we are called to follow Christ, not the state. Here is your host, Craig Hargis. Hey folks, do you believe your way of life matters? What about your way of life can you have an impact on those around you, good or bad? Is that way of life found in Jesus? Today, Matt and Phil from the Way of Life podcast join me and they have some insights into this with some funny accents as well. Let's go. Yeah. Left, right, left, right, left. We got our marching right, orders, man. Left, right, left, right. We'd rather left, serve God than right, serve Caesar, you know me? Right. I'm yeah. just trying to live right. what he said. I'm just trying to live. Folks, how are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, good, man. How yeah, are you? Good, good. Thanks for having us in our funny accents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I get told all the time that I'm the one with a funny accent. And I'm like, well, and I'm like, everybody in Texas just thinks everybody outside of Texas has funny accents. Y'all are all the funny ones. It's not us down there. <laughs> well, I'll be sure to uh, speak super Australian, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. If I'm ever going through like uh, on the internet or something, just played on YouTube or TikTok or something, and somebody comes across within there, they have an Australian accent. Like I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. It's not unfamiliar to me anymore. Yeah, yeah. Real Aussie slang for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna have any idea what you're talking about. You could probably be making fun of me, and I would never know. I would never know. Ha ha ha! That's so funny. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) you have no idea what we just called you. Well, Matt, let's uh, let's start with you first, and since you're the host of the podcast, um, why don't you give us the the listeners a little background of yourself, whatever you want folks to know about you, and then we'll, we'll start and we'll go to Phil, and then we'll get into the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I guess a quick kind of background on me. I grew up in Australia, as you might tell by my accent, um, and then uh, I was very much in kind of Christian circles. Uh, I was very heavily involved in in church. Um, uh, mainly as a drummer, actually, that's quite a big part of my story. Um, I really love to play drums, really meet with God, um, whilst playing drums in, in that way. So, and then I had a lot of, uh, a lot of Christian friends around me and, uh, I played in bands, um, and kind of the idea of part of why I was in those bands, because I really loved having conversations with people. Um, obviously it was a, a creative outlet, um, but I actually, um, loved to do that as well as just kind of meet people where they're at, whether that was just pubs, clubs, or youth groups even. Um, and then, yeah, chat with them there. have a background in, in retail, fun, fun, on sale. Used to be a salesman. And then uh, I felt uh, God calling me into kind of pastoral ministry. So I, I did a degree here in Brisbane in Australia. And, yeah, and then I, I found myself at, at Wynnum Baptist uh, which is where I met Phil, and yeah, the rest is history. So I mainly look after youth and young adults at, at the church, and kind of, uh, I guess we'll go into this in, in a bit. But podcast kind of came out of that, out of a want to to kind of be able to explore different topics and be able to do that in a conversational style, um, and allow people to kind of have questions and, and to to explore their doubts to explore different topics that they might not have thought about before. So, yeah. I I really like what you said about meeting folks where they're at, you know, because that was something that was expressed to me very early on in the podcast when we started this project. And it's something that I didn't latch onto at first because I'm pretty headstrong about some things. And then Abby, who has helped me in the past with the, with the podcast, she said, we've got to meet folks where they're at, you know, not everybody's where we are in terms of uh, Christianity and how we view the state and all this other stuff. But I know what she means now because once I, once I kind of latched onto that, it was, it's easier for me to just, all right, this is how I view things and you can kind of figure it out on your own. And once you figure it out on your own, it's going to mean more to you. Yeah. Mm. So I try not to, I think it's, and I, I like the idea of meeting folks in a pub, Yeah, absolutely. you know, and having a beer and, and talking about some of this stuff, you know, cause you know, you get, a, you get, you get a couple beers down some folks, uh, they, they loosen up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. That's true. <laughs> it might not be the way that everyone should do it, but right. <laughs> in terms of reaching people, but it does work like that quite a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, some of the most honest conversations I've had about politics and, and the church has been when we're at, is at a bar. Mm. Yeah, for sure. You know, out, you know, having some beers with some buddies and some of them, I mean, they're really honest conversation. You we really know what people believe about this stuff. They don't, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't really sugarcoat anything. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. Yeah. And it's, it's really important to meet people where they're at for another reason, because you want them to think about what you're talking about as well. You want them to not just take on board what you're saying and, and not think critically about it. You want them to actually, you know, pour over what they're hearing mm. and go, actually, I agree with that, but I don't really agree with that. And to work out why, because as soon as you understand why you believe something, it just takes that belief to a whole new level. So to, to meet people where they're at, puts them into a comfortable space where they're able to, you know, unpack those ideas um, at a level where they, they understand and then, yeah, build on that understanding into the future. Mm. I like it. I like it. Well, Phil, since you're, since you're speaking, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself as well, and then we'll go into the uh, Australian and American politics. Okay. <laughs> so I work as a, an underground coal miner here in Australia. Um, I grew up in a town about two hours from where we are here in Brisbane, um, a little place called Toowoomba and I moved down here with uh, my wife Talia in 2012 and um, I've been working in the mines pretty much since 2006 so it's about 16 years now. I've always had an interest in like video production and technical stuff and, and all that sort of thing. That came out of my experience at uh, my church in Toowoomba. Uh, they started up a video ministry when I was about 12 I think, 11 or 12 and um and when they did that, I was, I thought, oh, I, I really want to join that ministry. I couldn't join it until I was 13. And the week I turned 13, I went and approached the, um, the guy that ran it up and, and said, oh, Dan, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 13 now. I'm ready to join, join the ministry. And I, I'm pretty sure he regretted choosing 13 as the age because I was still <laughs> quite young. But yeah, he, um, he stuck to his word and, and let me on the team. And that's where my passion grew. And I, I learned how to do all the background stuff and and uh, and all that sort of thing and just sort of over the years developed that myself um heaps of youtube tutorials and just practice and stuff like that and then um when matt approached me and and said oh i've got this idea about doing a podcast that really resonated with me for for two reasons because first of all it aligned with my passion for like technical stuff and you know video editing video creation all that sort of stuff mm. But it was also tackling an issue that I was really passionate about as well, and that was just addressing some of these these strange cultural moments that uh, particularly young people are trying to work out, um, and particularly with the culture saying that, you know, you get to define your own truth and all that sort of stuff. That's a massive burden for, oh, for sure. particularly young people to, to bear. So we... Um, yeah, that's that's one of the premises behind what we do is to try and help young people navigate that. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's how I got how I got drawn into the way of life, and um, <laughs> and yeah, I absolutely love it. So yeah, yeah. I, I remember when I approached Bill because it was kind of I felt like it was something God was leading us to do, and then I was just like, oh, I'll approach Bill about it, and I had because part of the idea of the uh, at least so far it's going to probably change a little bit mm. um but most of our podcasts are actually live uh we do it on stage we do it on uh, like at the church that we're at um <clears throat> so we do it in front of an audience like a live audience and then uh we we stream it online as well mm. at the very same time so and i can remember kind of putting that idea to phil and i could just see his face just like real blank looking and i'm like oh gosh he really hates it. I'm like, he just was like, I'm like, what is going? I'm like, oh, it's a horrible idea. Okay, oh, we, won't, we won't do it. But meanwhile, I think you were just, you were just working things out. You're yeah. like, this is amazing, but how yeah. do I do this? <laughs> yeah, that's that has brought me unstuck a couple of times when when I get an idea in my head and I absolutely love it. I I sometimes forget to give people feedback, and I'm already like way down the road working out how to make it happen, and and I just get this blank look on my face, and I'm just you know going through the technical aspects of it, and it's like yeah, yeah we could do this and that, and, and they're sitting there waiting for feedback, just going, you know, 
what is going on? Like he absolutely hates it. I didn't think it was that bad. Which <laughs> all yeah. my insecurities come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I love it, man. I, yeah. I, I've, we've been doing a series of, of episodes with other podcasters because we, we, I've noticed, and I think you maybe maybe I've noticed too. A lot of people get get their information from podcasts these days. They're not really running to mainstream media, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. yeah. You know, corporate media. People are running away from that garbage, you know, and for good reason. I mean, if you and I don't know what it's like in Australia with y'all's media. We can talk about this too. But in America, the corporate media is so in bed with the state. They're just mouthpieces for the government. We're back. I remember reading a book uh, It's called The Lion of Liberty by you know, one of the founders of the, of the United States, uh, Patrick Henry. And they were describing how the media then really held the government to accountable for the, what they, the things they were doing. And these days, they gloss over the, the atrocities the government's involved with, you know, and they distract you with other garbage that people get so upset about, you know. And I don't know if it's like that in Australia as well, but. I like the, the idea of having, of helping people find out, find other podcasts so they can get some more information because we need the information. We need to hear the stuff that's coming from other folks that we're not seeing on corporate media. You know, mm-hmm. we, we need to hear it because there's a lot of people out there with a lot of things to say and they have good hearts and they want people to, to be better people, mm-hmm. you know? And so they, I, I think it's encouraging that when I'm people, I hear this all the time too. There's just too many podcasts and I disagree. I want more podcasts. I want more information. I want more folks. I want to hear from more people. Mm, you know, I, I think I think we need to flood the arena with podcasts. You know, especially when it comes to, to, to Christianity and the involvement with with the government with Christians as well. So let's how is how is, let's let's just start there with with the the media in Australia, and then we'll get into the political side of it as well. But is is it is that familiar to all what I said with how? the media here is in bed with, with the state or is it, is it, is it like that in Australia or is it, they hold them accountable there at all or? Um, I'll, probably yes and no. I don't know. Yeah. There's, so there's, there's a, a, a few particular um, stations that definitely do um, run with the, the state narrative a bit more. Um, and it's interesting to see like they, they do pledge their allegiance to either the, um, the, uh, I'll, I'll say liberals. Uh, it's not liberal in the same way that you guys see liberals. Uh, so liberals are sort of like the Australian liberals are sort of like your Democrats and um, our Labor Party are like your Republicans. Uh, no, sorry. Liberal. Other way other way around. Sorry. Other way around. When you so, hear liberal, it's not necessarily left wing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Liberal are your Democrats. Labor are like your Republicans. Yeah. So, so. Pretty. Well, see, then, like the the uh, I can't remember the, the term that's used was liberal. Liberal here used to mean something completely different than what it is. If I'm if I'm thinking about it correctly, because liberals now when you when you hear the word liberal here, it's they are so far to the left. We're used to liberal was more right in the middle. Mm, yeah. Things. Yeah. And now they've taken it to like you know when the progressive movement really took it far you know away from what it what it used to be and he you know even talking to some folks on the left just in, in conversation out in the wild you know they 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 don't even uh, uh, resonate with with the democrats here anymore mm. you know so they, they they're kind of lost yeah you know there's a lot of people on the right here the conservatives and I use conservatives loosely because they're not conservatives anymore you know they've they've moved more to the to the left as well they're just following along with the progressives trying to keep up basically because they see they feel like it, it to me it seems like they feel like they have to keep going that way to keep keep people voting for them to try to stay relevant i guess but but at the same time they're losing a lot of folks and people are like where do i go where do i go from here you know when you see a lot of folks maybe and this is what happened to me i got when donald trump was nominated i'm like i'm not get i can't get on board with this guy this guy is a joke and and so I just kind of went third party and then just stopped voting altogether after 2016. But, and I, I'm seeing that a lot with folks too, you know, half the country doesn't even vote here. Yeah. Wow. You know, and so you got 50% of the country telling the other 50% of the people how to live basically by putting these people in power and they call it democracy, but democracy leads to tyranny no matter what, you know, and it's, and then after tyranny, I had a guy we're releasing this episode this uh, next week. He he wrote a book on COVID nineteen. He said, and after tyranny comes revolution. He said it's just a, a natural progression. Now 
I'm not one to advocate for revolution. I mean, as a as a pacifist now, I'm, you know, I'm, I would not. I see a lot of folks in the quote unquote liberty movement here want to, you know, want an armed revolution like they did back whenever the country was founded. I'm like, yeah, but at the end of the day, you still got somebody holding a sword. Mm. Mm. There's still somebody holding a sword that's telling folks how to live their lives. I'm not about that life. I want to be left alone. And I want to leave my neighbor alone as well. Yeah. As long as we're not harming one another, you know, and it's everybody's best interest just to get along. In the vast majority of our our daily lives, we interact peacefully with one another mm. for the for the most part. I mean, you got crazy people everywhere, right? But yeah, and they're going to cause some trouble. But for, but the vast majority of folks just get along with one another peacefully. Yeah. And that's 99% of our lives. And you got that 1% where the government sticks its nose in it and screws it all up. Mm. Everything the government touches, they screw up. And, and I guess I got away from the media side of it. Can I ask a question? I'm curious. Like in the U.S., I know me and Phil have noticed this in, in Australia, but in terms you mentioned that we are uh, kind of as long as we're not harming each other. Um, and what I've seen kind of in Australia, I, it's more probably particularly with young people, um, is that the definition of harm seems to be kind of shifting, whereas kind of used to be a bit more like, uh, yeah, physical harm, like you don't actually physically harm someone, but now it's it's kind of more psychological as well. Or um, some people would probably even go as far, like really kind of, I guess you could say, liberal um, type thinking is that harm would be that you actually don't not only agree with me, but you don't actually support the way that I live, mm. um, and that is harmful. I, I reckon a lot of our young people in Australia, side note, watch a lot of, for instance, like TikTok, even statistically a lot of stuff's come out recently um, from uh, Macquarie Institute in Australia on uh, basically pe- young people are getting a lot of their information about the world and politics and and how to live their life from, from TikTok and, like you say, podcasts and, and YouTube. But, yeah, anyway, going back is that, Harm actually is 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 actually statistically being shown in Australia by our young people to be more like you don't just do not agree with me, but you don't support, support me, so you me. therefore hate me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I guess I see that. I, I I know what you're talking about because my thing is if somebody's doing something that makes them happy, it's none of my business. Okay, whether I support it or not. I mean, it's. It's not something that I would I would do. That doesn't mean I don't support you. I want you to be happy. So you know you know what I mean. But I think that there's a lot of folks that, and I think what you're talking about, Matt, is is a, a lot of folks need to be um, propped up, or they need to be reassured of what they're doing. Maybe, and if you're not, if maybe they're just seeking reassurance of of how they're living or or how whatever they're, yeah. whatever they're doing that they need you to support. Maybe they're just seeking reassurance. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm not going to sugarcoat things for folks if they want me if, mm. if if it's making you happy have a ball but just don't if i don't participate in it if i don't want to live my life that way it doesn't mean i don't want you to be happy yeah absolutely it just means i've just chosen this path but go, go about your day <laughs> you're still made in the image of god you still have value it's not like you're less than of a human and mm. have less value because you have a different opinion uh to me or to someone else but it's, it's, it is interesting that it kind of has been taking more of that shift of that you don't actually support me and therefore you don't like me. Mm. So, or support the exact kind of ideology or thinking that they have. Um, and that, that's interesting. Yeah. I think what that comes from as well is what I mentioned earlier about, you know, freedom being a complete lack of boundaries and you can choose your own truth and all that sort of stuff. When you're trying to choose your own truth, you need some sort of feedback to tell you that you're on the right path. And that's what people are looking for. And if you don't agree with what I'm doing, with my truth, then you're wrong and I've got a right to be upset with you because you don't agree with the truth that I've chosen. It's such a convoluted thing. Um, But that's generally, I think that's how it happens. You know, that's the feedback loop that people are looking for. Mm. And yeah, if it's not, if it's not you agreeing with what's going on, then you're wrong and I have a right to be upset with with you. Do you all see this as, in more with, with younger folks? I mean, y- y- y'all work with young folks in your church. You've seen it more with younger folks that, that need this because people my age, I don't, I'm, I'll don't. i be 48 in May. So people my age, 
not a lot of us think that way, you know, and even, even my parents and grandparents, they didn't think that way. And so are y'all seeing this with younger folks that are needing this kind of reassurance more than, than people our age? I mean, y'all are younger than me, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I work with mainly youth and young adults and I probably see it probably, I have a really great lot of uh, youthies and I probably don't see it quite as much with them, but I think they're, to be honest, I think they're the exception, not the norm when it comes to to young people at the moment, at least in Australia. um, I think a lot of young people actually do think the way, whether consciously or not, um, that we've been kind of describing. Mm. Um, And uh yeah, so I don't know what would you say in your experience, Phil, because you don't hang out with young people as much yeah. as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up at the mines. That's right. So yeah. I I agree with you, Craig, for sure. Like where I work, um, it's a lot of guys who, let's say, who live in the real world. I suppose you know they're not they're not stuck behind computer screens. They're not constantly being bombarded by all these different ideologies. All they're doing is going to work doing their thing and going home so that they can they can put food on the table. So they've, they've got very little time for all this weird ideology stuff. Um, it doesn't make sense to them. They don't want their kids indoctrinated with it and all that sort of stuff. So from where I see, um, like the, the, ordinary, the ordinary person doesn't understand it, doesn't want to understand it, and just thinks that it has no, it has no purpose or point in society. And, and we, we see that through a whole range of different stuff, whether it be um, through the, the same-sex marriage stuff or this LGBT stuff. It's, it's all so bizarre. They just don't understand it. And I think that that shows that, honestly, I think that that is the, the uh, mindset of a majority of people. They just don't understand it, but they're afraid to, to say, this doesn't make sense because, you know, it's such a polarized environment. That's a reflection, um, like the, the polar opposite to what Matt's seeing, um, because yeah, these kids who are who are like, getting back to the media thing, they're getting mm. they're getting drawn into this media whirlpool, yeah, um, who are pushing this this particular agenda, and it's difficult. And I think also in Australia, we we don't get balanced media anymore. It's it's very much either left leaning or right leaning. Very very rarely is it in the centre, and. One of my big bugbears is that the media outlet here in Australia that is um, a little bit more right wing is so right wing that you can't call it balanced. It's just ridiculous. It's the same here, man. It's the same here with our media. I mean, you got Fox News on one side, and they're they're the top, the mouthpiece for the right, and then you've got CNN and MSNBC, and they're the mouthpiece for the left, and it's two extremes there's nothing in the middle and i can't stand it i can't stand to, to listen to it I'll, I'll tune it out you know what and i used to be the type of person that would watch that garbage all the time i'd come home from work and i'd fall asleep watching fox news because mm. i thought they were the only ones telling the truth but they were just saying things that i wanted to hear yeah 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 they were saying things that you know that i agreed with they were they weren't giving me other counterpoints you know so and now I'm, I'm so far removed from that type of stuff. I get all my information from podcast. If I want to know about something, I'll search it out through podcast or somebody will send me something to listen to, you know, and I'll get my information that way. I did not take anything that the, that corporate media says at all to be truth. None of it. I, I think it is. I have zero trust in the government. I have zero trust in corporate media. And I had somebody ask me one time too. He goes, well, how do you know the, the people on the podcast that you're listening to? are telling you the truth. And I said, well, it's not just one podcast. You can put them on top of each other, these different podcasters. And, they're, and they're, it's the consistency that, that gets me. If they're if they're being consistent with something, then it's going to keep my focus and it's going to keep me interested in what they're saying and I want, I want to learn more. And it's the inconsistency with corporate media that loses me. You know, You know they're lying to you. And you know they've got an agenda. There's an agenda behind the media. Their, their agenda is to prop up whoever they want in the White House. You know, you know, and, and it's funny too to watch a lot of uh, the right here. A lot, some of them have turned. Not, and I'm not talking about voters. I'm talking about the media. They have turned on Donald Trump, where there was you know, there was a lot of them on the propping him up when he was president here. And now it seems like they're they turned on him. They're they're doing everything they can to keep him from running again. It seems like. And it's just a, a show to me. It's just a, it's a clown show to me. It's, it's, 
And it's it's just so it's it's. Have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? Oh, a long time ago. Mm. This is it, that movie reminds me of, of American politics. <laughs> it is it is so it is it's such a stupid movie, but it's funny. But it just reminds me of American politics, and and it's now now a lot of us say that it's no longer a movie; it's a documentary. <laughs> mm, that's right. I've heard someone else say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, folks. Craig here, and I'd like to let y'all know we are always looking for writers to contribute to our blog. I don't care if you have any experience or not. Two or three of our contributors had no prior experience writing, and it turns out they have a real knack for it. Our project coordinator helps them put the articles together, and she publishes them on our website and Facebook page, and you will also have the option to come on the show and go more in depth about your article. So if you like what we're doing at The Bad Roman and would like to try your hand at writing, then send us an email at thebadromanpodcast at gmail.com. We're having a blast with this project, and we would love for you to join us in helping promote it. Now back to the show. So before we started recording, and I'm curious about y'all's take on this, I'm, I'm curious about the Australian government because I'm pretty naive to it, other than what you know what you've talked to me about it, Phil. And it's funny y- y'all told me before we started recording that y'all folks in Australia and even the media in Australia seem more interested in American politics. And I don't know if that's the if that's the case around the world or if it's just Australia. But and then somebody I don't remember who told me this, but it seems like. They said anything that the American government does, the Australian government jumps on board immediately. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Is that true? I would say we wouldn't be too far behind for a lot of things, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for sure, for sure. Why do you think that is? Uh, I actually have no idea. What, I, what do you reckon, Phil? I think our military alliance with you guys has a lot to do with that. Um, I think that's a huge, huge driving force there because it's not just that like a – we're in alliances with with all sorts of different countries around around the world that include America. So I think that the fact that we've we've got so many ties military, how would you say it, yeah. militaristically, that we we sort of can't pull away from that. Um, we're we're in we're in too deep. So I think that yeah, we sort of do go along with it a little bit. So yeah, that that's that's probably yeah. my my take on it. Yeah. Could be just part of, I guess, social media even, and, and like things like TikTok, <clears throat> and like I'm, I don't know why, but like American kind of ideas and your politics seems more interesting. People are just more interested in it in Australia, and it gets more clickbait. So <laughs> possibly it's just kind of a positive feedback loop that's mm. just gotten real, real far down the road. But people just don't really care that much about. Politics. Yeah, I don't even think most most Australians know how our kind of government properly works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I must say your your politics over there is a lot more flamboyant than ours. There's a lot more to look at and see. And yeah. just go, wow. <laughs> it's a clown show, man. <laughs> that's what it is here. I mean, and and that's why I'm so happy to be so far removed from now. I have a lot of loud opinions about it. This is something that I've talked about on the show before, and it's something that I recognized by reading like early church writers, you know, prior to Constantine, they had no interest in being entangled with the Roman empire, but they had loud opinions about them. Mm. The state's going to do state stuff. We're going to have a lot of loud opinions about it, but it's not our thing. That's their thing. You know, we belong to an entirely different kingdom. You know, people might think I'm joking when I say this, a lie when I say this, but I'm a lot less grumpy than I used to be when I was so involved with that, with that stuff, you know, because I, I stayed angry all a lot because I was always worried that the, you know, my idea is I had to get as many Republicans in office because I was afraid of the, the liberals. So basically, mm. basically my vote was out of fear. And I've talked to folks who on the left who can't stand Joe Biden. Yeah, that's a rough, but they were afraid of Donald Trump. And that's the only reason they voted for Joe mm. Biden. I'm like, so you're voting out of fear. They've got you right where they want you right now. You're voting out of fear. You're not voting out of principle. And I don't, I don't, I think there's very few people in this country that even vote out of principle, which there's some that maybe do that, you know, even libertarians, they'll, they'll lose their, they got a lot of good ideas, but they'll still lose their principles because it depended on, I mean, when I first got involved with, um, with the libertarians, when I left the Republican Party, they nominated Gary Johnson back in 2016 and run on, run on the ticket for president. And I was like, I can't vote for this guy either. This guy's a clown too. But libertarians were so 
they kept pushing Gary Johnson. Well, a lot of libertarians left too. They voted about with another third party, the Constitution Party. But anyway, they were so interested in getting that three percent. If they could get three percent of the vote that they can get, or maybe it's fifteen percent of the vote or something. I can't remember. I don't even care anymore. But there was a certain percentage they needed so they could get their guy on the debate stage with the Republicans and Democrats. The thing is, is the Republicans and Democrats are going to change the rules at the last minute anyway to, to keep people off this. They, they don't. It's a it's a duopoly, and they don't want they don't want any other dissenting voices up there with them. It's a the Republicans and Democrats. If people are not smart enough to recognize this by now, they're never going to get it. They're all, on the same team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say different things to try to keep you hooked, but they're on the same team. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. I mean, if you can look at it like. You know, there was a time when the, when the Democrats were anti-war. Now these neoliberals are some of the most, they're some of the biggest war hawks out there. You know, Joe Biden's a war hawk. You know, he talked about ending this stuff in Yemen, the support for the Saudis in Yemen when he was running, and he talked about it in the support, but then he ramped it up, and now we're seeing the Saudis and, and I don't know something. The Saudis and Chinese are trying to broker a peace deal in Yemen now, and it's angering the American government. Mm. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> They're actively working for peace, and you're getting angry with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And I, I just, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm just happy to be away from it and not a part of it. Mm. it it's really helped me with my in, with, in my faith as well. You know, understanding how. Jesus worked towards peace and there's nothing peaceful about the government, you know, and the, the, everything the government does, whether it seems like they got good intentions is it, they're still harming somebody somewhere in some fashion, mm. whether they're, they're taking, if they're going to use tax dollars to feed somebody, they're still stealing that money from somebody to feed somebody where the church should be involved in, in doing that voluntarily to, to feed these folks, you know, when the church is outsourcing, this is what I see in America. I can't speak for, you know, uh, outside of America, you know, I know, I know churches look a lot different than they do here in America, but American churches tend to outsource their charity through the state. And that's just, there's nothing. Jesus never told us to do that. <laughs> he never, they told us to, to feed the, 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 the widows and the orphans, you know, the early church spent a lot of time working on the outskirts of, uh, of, of society, the, the people that were pushed aside by the elites, you know, and the church was out there working with those folks, helping those folks. And we don't see that anymore. Mm. Go ahead, Matt. Oh yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that probably there is quite a lot of Christian kind of charity still to this day in Australia. Mm. Like yeah. it still is quite a decent chunk. Um, and then I don't know, I'm just thinking about Brisbane, but there is quite a lot of like food ministries and things like that um, as well. Um, but certainly we could be, doing more that that's for sure mm. um the other thing i was i was gonna say i don't know if you agree with this phil but i i feel like a lot of a lot of kind of australians are, are, are quiet to themselves a lot of the time like they're kind of like just don't don't bother me about politics or mm. um i don't really we don't really talk about it very much there's a small percentage of people that do but on the on the flip side of that is that we're quite trusting um of government generally speaking um mm. Like, we'll kind of roll with it. We'll just kind of go with whatever's happening. We're kind of just like, okay, we're comfortable. Just kind of leave us alone. We don't really care. We just want to live our life. We're just like, you you do you type of thing. So yeah. it is a bit of an interesting contrast when maybe part, maybe that's part of why we find American politics so interesting. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're just so, well, it seems like it, sorry, um, that you're so invested in it. And it's such a part of even like Christian identity, like or church identity and like where are you a Democrat or Republican or this. But for, for, for more, from my experience at churches and talking with other pastors from even different denominations is that, we just we don't even talk about it. Mm. Like when when it's not who we vote for in Australia doesn't really play much a part of kind of week to week uh, Christianity within church or within life most of the time. Mm. Mm. Well, there's a there's a couple things there. I will, let's talk about voting real quick. Um, Phil, your wife Talia told me this, and I, I was unaware of this, and that if y'all don't vote in Australia, then you get a fine. Yeah, that's that's. Correct. I was unaware of that. Yeah, like yep. you get basically they're gonna they're gonna fine you if you don't vote. Like they're it's, it sounds like the, the voting is out of out of coercion <laughs> and not um, yeah voluntary. Yeah, that's right. So you've um 
I think I'm pretty sure it's 16. When you turn 16, you're eligible to enroll to vote. So if you if you choose to do that, you're on the electoral roll. And then um, every election, whether that be at a federal level or a state level or a local level, um, you have to go and you get your name marked off um, on your on the electoral roll. You get your ballot sheet. Um, now, what you do with that ballot sheet is completely up to you. So if you just want to go and and you know scrunch it up in a ball and put it in the bin that's fine that's you don't get penalized for that you just have to get your name marked off the sheet to say that you've come here you've collected your ballot paper and that's it so you can just draw a flower and a sun and something on it and put it and put it in the ballot box and that's fine that's completely fine i can, I can think of so many so many terrible things i would do with that ballot sheet and you can guarantee that that stuff happens exactly what you're thinking that's happening i can guarantee it so i love it yeah so you yeah you don't have to go and um and fill out your ballot correctly but you do have to go to a polling booth and get your name marked off the list. I could have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people do. Absolutely. Yeah. So you don't actually have to vote for a person. You don't really actually actually have to vote for a, a candidate. You could just go pick this piece of paper up. Pretty much, yeah. That's right. Take it yeah. home and burn yeah. it or throw it in the garbage or yeah. whatever. You just don't that you just have to pick it up. Well, then I could see that. I mean, but yeah, I, if, if I was being forced to vote, and I, but I didn't actually have to vote for a candidate, yeah, I could have a lot of fun with that, a lot of fun. I'm not 100% sure of the ins and outs of what happens to your vote if you do that, whether it goes to a particular person, if it's a, they call it a donkey vote, which is a, a, a vote that's not filled out correctly. I'm not, I'm not sure of the implications of doing that, whether there's, you know, something in the background that, oh, it's a donkey vote, so it goes to some other person. I'm not sure if that happens or not. Mm. But, yeah, as far as you being forced to elect someone in particular, yeah, there's, there's nothing along those lines, yeah. Okay, so another thing, too, Matt was talking about, um, y'all just kind of keep to yourself and you know, don't really talk about this stuff. And I had mentioned we had a, me, us three had a Zoom call you know, here a while back to kind of visit and get to know each other. But I mean, I know you feel, but me and Matt were familiar with each other. So, yeah. Yeah. And I told both y'all and, and what we were, what we were seeing there, like during the COVID lockdowns and stuff, the stuff we were seeing in our media was happening in Australia. It looked like the cops out there were just brutalizing people for not putting mm. a mask on their face or, you know, not getting vaccinated, all this stuff. But this is what we were seeing. But when I talked to, to your average Australian, they, they're like, it wasn't really like, it wasn't as widespread as way, the way our media was portraying it. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I don't think it was. There was definitely small pockets of really intense pushback. Mm. Um, but it wasn't like, you know, on every street corner, there was people rioting and protesting. It wasn't like that at all. No. Um, but where it was happening, it was actually really quite intense. Yeah. It looked like it. What we were seeing, the, the, we were seeing, you know, the same thing happened here in America too. They weren't really showing us a lot of that. They were showing what was happening in Australia, you know, and everybody in America is familiar with Crocodile Dundee, right? And we were seeing this go on, you know, with, uh, with, with these cops and these people who kept waiting for Crocodile Dundee to show up and start <laughs> fighting these cops off, nice. you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a knife. This is a knife, you know, and that's a t that's what Americans were waiting for, for Australians to do to stand up to to this tyranny that the government was doing to folks. But yeah, we never saw it, and so now I don't know if I can ever watch Crocodile Dundee, <laughs> honestly again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a movie. It's not a true story. <laughs> that goes back to to what Matt mentioned earlier: is that generally Australians are quite trusting, and I think a lot of that comes from. Um, the the history of politics in Australia. Like I remember growing up, um, the the government was a lot less intrusive than what it is now. Um, the government was there to support the population. You know, they, they were governing to enable um, you know family businesses to thrive, so you know they can they can build their own communities, and they were building um, building you know, platforms enabled. In, in order to enable people to do that well mm. and to succeed. And I think that's where a lot of the trust that Australian has in governments was born from, and that's just carried over. And I think over the years, the government has become more and more and more intrusive into people's lives. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's a uh, an ex-politician, his name is John Anderson. He has a podcast here in Australia as well. 
And he is a big believer in small government. And um, and he was actually a part of, I would argue, one of the most successful governments in Australia's history because they built platforms and systems that enabled people to generate money to, to build their societies. And that in turn built Australia as a nation to something so successful. Um, and, and that was because that the, the platforms were there built by the government to support the people to, to do what they needed to do to be successful. Mm. And I think that's, that's where the trust mm. came from. Mm. Well, you know, you talk about smaller government and, and this is where I'm at, you know, as far as my, my view of the state, I don't participate, not because I'm an anarchist, but because I'm a Christian. Okay. That, that's where I'm at. And this is where Craig's at. I'm not saying anybody has to do what Craig's at, what, what I'm saying, but now putting that aside, if I was still involved with that stuff, and if I wasn't a Christian or if I wasn't putting my, 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 uh, Christianity into it, the idea of a small government is appealing. And that's actually the way the idea of America was about was having a small government where they weren't even, you didn't even know they existed. They were there just to protect your liberty. Mm, Yeah. That was the idea. It's a good idea. The thing is, it's turned into Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, they were, Australian government was a lot less intrusive at one time. It was the same with, with the United States government. But there, it, it, even in the beginning, our very first president, George Washington, did even not even follow his own oath to the Constitution. So it just got worse and worse and worse over time when it came to the government. You know, so the idea of a small government is appealing because it's, if, if, if there's a government there, you don't want to know they exist. Mm. You don't want them involved with your life. You don't want them spying on you. You don't want them in their in your backyard. You don't want, you know, all that stuff. Mm. Yeah. That does not exist anymore. And, and, and I'm of the opinion that there's no way back. It's gotten so big and such a monster now that there's no way that's ever going to ta- change until Jesus comes back. Yeah, right. And I, you know, we see, you see in history, all empires end up falling. And, and, and America, relatively speaking, is a very young country. And they are on the verge. I, I, I believe that the United States government is on the verge of a collapse. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it in our, in our lifetime. There's no way you can, they can sustain what they're doing. You know, you see the rest of the world, what I'm seeing, the rest of the world, they seem to be turning against the United States government. And I think it's going to make the United States government want to grow. There's this new thing they're trying to push through now, uh, the Restrict Act, mm. which basically, I don't know if you're familiar with the Patriot Act that they passed after 9-11. This is Patriot Act 2.0. It's Patriot Act on steroids. It's it's way more intrusive, way more involved. They can start locking people up if they if they see you engaging with folks and i don't really i didn't really read it all there's i mean no i don't even think they read it all because there's so much garbage in it that that could really be very harmful to a private citizen that just wants to be left alone yeah yeah right okay wow yeah yeah that seems um yeah that's pretty full-on like look i don't i'm not aware that we have anything quite that extensive here in australia like that's pretty that's pretty full-on yeah yeah well the the united states government is a monster it's a machine and it's an evil machine. And I, I, I don't know if y'all saw recently too, this guy was just arrested for leaking uh, stuff out about our involvement with U- Ukraine. And I, I mean, if, if, if people believe that we didn't have troops in there <laughs> in Ukraine at this point, you're being completely naive <laughs> because the United States government sends their military everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. They've been sending billions of dollars to the Ukrainian government to support this war against Russia. And did you think that they didn't send troops over there too? Come on. What do you, Come on. What do you think? Like, why is the U S like so interested in sending troops everywhere? Uh, money and power. A lot of it is oil mm. too. I mean, you got, uh, I mean, I've talked to people who, who served in uh, Afghanistan and, and Iraq, you know, and they, so they were just guarding a lot of times they were guarding oil. Mm. Yeah, wow. And a lot of them woke up to it's like, this is weird. We're not here trying to nation build or yeah. promote democracy and all this stuff. They're, that's not what we're doing. We're here protecting oil. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, and even in Afghanistan, there's there's stories of um of Marines guarding poppy fields. Mm. Oh wow. And this is interesting too. I mean, somebody mentioned this to me after that when they were protecting, because that's you know, that's how Afghanistan really kind of supported themselves was through the opiate stuff, you know, and 
once we started protecting that stuff over there, the opiate crisis in America got way worse. I don't know. And that just kind of put those two together too. It's kind of crazy, but you know, the, the, that's a bad thing over here in America right now, right now too, is with the opiate uh, crisis, you know, with people hooked on that stuff. And it's just, I don't know. Getting back to your thing, Matt, I think it's just for money and power. I mean, it's greed. It's uh, needing to be in control. It's not. It's not for safety. It, it has nothing to do with that. It's. I think so. I, I do have some insights on that. Um, so I listened to a guy. His name is um, Peter Zihan, and he he speaks a lot about um, how globalization came about, particularly after World War Two, and he said that the the role of the U.S. government played in globalization was that they secured trade routes they they made it safe for countries to sail across the seas you know they they protected those routes from pirates and all that sort of stuff so i think way back then in the 1940s it was it was primarily based on safety to protect those lines it started from a place of, of um you know a, a, a wholesome idea of let's actually rebuild this world better than what it started. But now it's morphed into something so much bigger mm. um, instead of being, you know, looking outward and, and trying to, you know, benefit the global community. It's now turned into itself and it's just like, okay, we need more and more and more for less and less and less. Mm. I want to get into y'all's podcast here, but before we do that, I, I kind of lead into that. I'm kind of curious about y'all's view as Christians and what y'all see in your own church and other, you know, maybe other churches around Australia and how they, how they interact with the government. You know, I mean, I'm kind of curious. I've listened to some folks on your show and that y'all have talked about this some on, on the podcast. And, and I told you also too, before we started recording that, I've listened. I listen to them, and some of the stuff they say I agree with, and some of the stuff I disagree with. Mm. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious what y'all's take is on on this, and what y'all are seeing in your own church as far as how Christians interact with the government in the state. Or do y'all just? Is it one of those things? Like y'all said, y'all just don't talk about it. You know, Matt said y'all just don't talk about it even in church. Don't really. I mean, I think things are becoming more political, if that makes sense. Um, generally speaking in what like say if you believe something uh, i don't know i'll use the classic example of lgbt type thing it's more like it becomes like a political statement mm. um as well but really in terms of just like politics of like what's happening in our government and things like that i don't think i've almost ever heard, had a conversation with someone in it in our church uh, about that mm. um so it's yeah it doesn't really get talked about that much to be honest yeah it it does start to um it does start to appear particularly around election time um we do have christian lobby groups here in australia that that lobby the government on certain issues mm-hmm. and and that sort of um that gets back into church circles as well saying you know this is what what we're what we're mm-hmm. lobbying about but um it's definitely not as full on as what it is over there um so well, I, I i've noticed that um, a lot of your churches over there will have like an American flag on the stage and all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, like there's none of that here in Australia. No, absolutely none. Like no one has a, a flag on the stage. There's nothing there. It's yeah, it's so it is completely different. Um, yeah, there is a little bit of crossover, but it's it's not it's not peddled like from the pulpit at all. No, yeah, I think maybe i don't know if we would call this kind of political but probably the closest thing to it was probably during covid um where but it was about like vaccine mandates and like lockdowns and things like that there was quite polarizing different mm. types of ideas within most churches within australia i'd say um and kind of us as a as a church just chose from the pulpit to kind of go we're not going to discuss this yeah um like we're not going to let this divide us um that type of thing which i thought was a a decent call Mm. um but yeah i think that was probably the closest but i don't even know if you call that a political type of statement or or a political kind of conversation i guess Mm. it depends on how you define it yeah so you or you mentioned the 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 american flag on the stage and there was a time and i don't know if you're familiar with southern baptist churches and not all of them were like this I mean, I mean you know full disclosure but it was not it or it was a normal thing or it was not abnormal 
or nobody batted an eye when he'd walk in there with his American flag on the stage. Mm. Hell, I remember one time standing up in the Southern Baptist Church and pledging allegiance to the United States of America, you know, doing the oh, wow. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, wow. And at the time, I thought, this is normal. We're a Christian nation. We should be doing this. Yeah. Looking back, man, that is so cringe. I mean, just <laughs> completely cringe. And um, if I, if I, find a church at some point, you know, I, I'm really kind of turned off to the idea of just American churches to me, the vast majority of them look too much like the government to me. And I just don't want to participate in it, you know, but if I did find one, I walked in and there was an American flag anywhere in the building, I would leave. I mean, I'm not going to participate in something like that because I know where their allegiance yeah. is. It's not to Christ. You know, you can't, you know, Jesus himself said you can't serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other. You know, it's not, and that's the, that's the way it is, you know. And when when I talk to folks outside of America, and what's going on in their churches? Y'all kind of, I get the looks that y'all are giving me right now. Like it's very strange, you know, how American <laughs> churches <laughs> behave in that aspect because it's not like you said, it's not going on in Australia. Mm. No, it is a bit of a foreign concept. Yeah. Um, what is happening in America in terms of what happens in our church thing you can just see how how entangled the church and the state have become here in america i mean it's there i've, I've heard pastors behind the pulpit recommending one candidate or the other you know during election time and that would never happen in australia yeah. basically or very seldom <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's normal you know a lot of the times around here that's what kind of what spurred our, our project is to try to you know get christians to refocus on christ Mm. and not the state get back to the teachings of christ and get back to what jesus was teaching and, and then the early church was teaching you know get back to that and then not don't worry about all that other garbage you know we're a small platform we've, we've got we've done pretty well over the past three years but it's hopefully people keep sharing it people start waking up to this idea mm. all right enough about the bad roman let's talk about the way of life <laughs> podcast. you mentioned earlier that how you went to phil about the idea and stuff but kind of curious just tell us about the podcast and what your goals are with it yeah sure um well we've kind of started to allude to it but i guess what i could see particularly for young people is that they're growing up in a in a world of ideas um, but no kind of uh, particular ethos or um, kind of scaffolding or foundation to try to navigate all these myriad of ideas type of thing. Like we're kind of a, a post-Christian nation now, whereas a lot of our ideas used to kind of, even if you weren't a Christian, it, a lot of it was grounded in, in biblical uh, truth, <laughs> quote unquote. Yeah. And, um, but now it's kind of you can, like Phil said before, you can just live your own truth. You can kind of be whoever you want to be. You can find whatever works for you, that type of thing. But I think I think me and Phil we've talked about it a fair bit. But that's actually a lot of people like Jordan Peterson and a bunch of really um, really good podcasters have said it. But a myriad of ideas and this whole idea of freedom without boundaries is actually crippling. It actually brings it, it more brings anxiety because there's too many things to choose from. Mm. I know this is a weird example, but I, I use it quite often. Is that when I was in retail as a salesperson, you'd never give someone more than three options. Otherwise, they just most people can't can't handle it. They're like, oh, this is too many, and they get overwhelmed and they'll think about it and never come back. So you give them three options, but now like it's because it causes anxiety. It comes like you're just like, oh, I have no idea what to do. Your brain can only kind of consume so much information and try to level it out and work it out uh, at a time. So, and that's what I'm seeing in young people. They're, they're crippled by this a lot of the time. Not every young person, but a lot of them, they're, they're crippled by too much information and too many ideas without any scaffolding to kind of go with. Um, so part of what we wanted to do, oh, sorry, but the second part of that, and I will get to the podcast, is that because it's, there's so much information out there, so many different ideas, what I see is that they they tend to kind of go with the, kind of a herd mentality. It's fa fairly kind of human type thing to do. Yeah. Um, they kind of go with the idea that is most popular or the idea that their friends or somebody that they listen to kind of goes with, but they don't, generally speaking, uh, in my experience, don't really think about it at any great depth. Um, they're not, they don't actually know why they believe what they believe. Um, they're kind of just going with it for the sake of going with it. And they're, they're very, um, 
uh, social justice kind of like they're, they're very passionate about something that they haven't thought about very much. Um, and I, I guess what I've seen is that that actually plays implications and in, uh, like, it's not, it's not rocket science. Like mm. if you believe something, it will affect how you live, uh, how you think in, and how you interact with the world around you. Um, and if you're not, if you're not really, yeah, if it's if it's toxic thinking or not very good ideas, then that's not going to really lead you to anything great. So long story short is that I kind of wanted to give a platform to help uh, people think a bit. <laughs> um, and that's why we do a, a whole heap of different kind of topics and, and, and interview a whole heap of different people that I even wouldn't always agree with. Like that's the idea. I don't want people to just kind of go with something for the sake of going with it. I don't want it to be this herd mentality type thing. I want someone to actually think for themselves because I don't. I don't think people are taught to do that anymore. They don't. They don't. They don't know how to think for themselves or to think critically or to kind of push ideas, even if they don't agree with them. And because what well, it's but even the name is based on John fourteen six that Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." So we see that there's. Like Jesus doesn't say that I am one way amongst many equally good ways. He says, no, I am the like singular way um, to life. Mm. Um, so we see that everyone picks a way, in li- a way of life and that, that way actually re- it really matters. It truly matters and it affects how you live. So we want people to openly, whether they're a Christian or whether they're a skeptic or where anything in between, to kind of be able to come to these conversations honestly, even if they don't agree with it, and to wrestle with it to help them think. As well, kind of equip you know, like Christians even with certain topics that they might not be thinking about, but mm. they're probably going to meet someone um, who is thinking about it or uh, meet a, meet someone who doesn't know Christ that, um, that they will actually be helpful. So it's a big myriad of things, but basically we want to help people think. We want to have open, honest conversations um, and it's not, it doesn't have to fit within the bounds of this is exactly what I believe. And yeah, I see too many people kind of go, oh, I don't believe that one little line that this person said, so I'm going to turn off and I'm going to get really angry at them. Yeah. I, I can't stand it because you're like, how are you ever meant to ever meant to kind of like get through life? How are you ever meant to interact with people um, without having to think about these things critically. So, yeah, uh, hopefully that answered it. But, yeah, so that's where the kind of podcast idea came from in a way. I wasn't sure how to do that because I wanted it to be a bit of a different, um, bit different to like just a, a sermon or on a Sunday type thing. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit more interactive. And even you said a lot of people are listening to podcasts now. It's a bit more... Um, it's a bit more casual and it's a bit more down to earth. You can start to kind of feel a bit more a part of the conversation rather than being talked at by someone on mm. stage. Um, so, yeah, so that's where the where the idea kind of kind of came from. I like it. I like it. And that was a lot of the, um, the driving force behind us um, wanting to do it live as well is that as we're talking about these, um, these issues and, and topics and, and cultural moments and whatever – um, people will have questions about what's being spoken about. So, so having a time for people to be able to ask questions of the people who are talking about this stuff mm. to help them work through these ideas and, and try and build a, an idea of, you know, do I agree or do I not agree and why to help them, you know, I've got a question about this, put it in the chat and say, you know, help me understand this better. Mm. Um, yeah. I like that. I did, I did actually uh, participate one time in one of y'all's live podcasts and sent in a question. <laughs> I heard about that from Tyler. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know, like, that's Craig's question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I, I, I got her. I know I got her with this question because yeah. the, I wasn't satisfied with the answer either, but it's, it's all good. But I remember <laughs> when I remember Matt's looking at this question, and I was like, he's fixing to read it. He's fixing to read it. And I could see the look on Matt's face. I don't even remember what it was about now either, but the lady, but she didn't really like have a, an immediate reaction to the <laughs> the question. 
And then, like she was trying to process it, how to answer it. But yeah, I, I do remember disagreeing <laughs> with what she said anyway. That's good. That, thanks. I know, obviously, I, I imagine you'd be doing this, but like <laughs> you're thinking about it, you're going through it. You're not like turning off. You're like, ah, oh, screw this way of life. Yeah. I don't like them because of one thing someone said. Like, oh, no. I mean, I've learned that along the way too. You know, it, it, and I, I get frustrated with the folks that when, like if we'll if we on our Facebook page if we share a meme about some like say Gandhi said something that in relative to Christianity and stuff and people will just dismiss it because it's Gandhi because Gandhi did some and I don't know if it's true or not some nefarious things the same with like Martin Luther King Jr. he did some things but he still had some great things to say why are you turning folks off for one statement or one action when they've got some other things to say that we should probably be listening to anyway. I don't, under, I don't understand that. And maybe I, maybe I'm, I've been guilty of that in the past. I no longer am. I, I, I yeah, we probably all have to, to a degree, but I, I just, I don't understand that mentality anymore. Why right. just, just shutting people off because you disagree with one thing, or even you, you might disagree with a lot of things they are saying, but they may have something that you haven't heard before. And you need to hear that perspective as well. That's right. Yeah. At least you'd kind of learn what you don't agree with and why, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It would mm. probably solidify what you do believe more at the end of the day. And that's kind of part of what we were trying to do is like, either way, like you're going to, you're going to see something differently or you're going to like, and you might not agree with it. Um, but it will solidify what you do already think and vice versa. Right. Yeah, but like if you dig enough into any person's life, like if I dig enough into Phil's life, I'm probably going to find something I don't agree with. Mm. And then does that mean I can't be friends with him? Like we, like logically speaking, if you take it to its extreme, no one could be agreeing or friends with anyone on this planet because yeah. everyone would have something that they disagree on. Right. Mm. Well, that's true. That's one thing we try to really focus on with this show is just to get as many different perspectives as possible because it wouldn't be successful if it was just me behind a microphone doing a solo solo podcast spouting off how Craig believes the world should should be behaving right now. I might have a few people that agree with me, but that's not going to latch on. It's not going to go anywhere. And so you get folks on here that I've had folks on the show that I don't agree with a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, or some of the time, I should say. But at the same time, there's other people listening there, and they're they're forming their own idea about these things with their own perspective, and they're hearing a different perspective other than Craig's. You know, and that's what I like about y'all's podcast is y'all get different perspectives on the show. You know, for folks to kind of mm. work this out themselves, and that's what we're all trying to do is as we go along in our lives is just try to figure this stuff out as we go. Mm. You know, and still get along with each other. You know, it's like we were talking about earlier with stuff that with folks who need you know that reassurance and stuff, but. It doesn't mean we can't be friends just because I don't agree with you. It doesn't mean I hate you. It doesn't mean I'm mad at you. It just means I just don't, it's not something I would participate in, you know, or it's not the way I would live my life. Mm, mm. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean we can't be friends. I mean, I've got friends from all walks of life, man. You know, I just, so, and I'm a social butterfly by nature. So I enjoy being able to talk to as many different people as possible. So yeah. cool. Yeah. And being able, I think also being able to disagree with people in a healthy way, you you have to learn how to do that, right? Because like Matt said, you're not going to agree with every single person on every single topic. So you know you, you see in society today, um, particularly here in Australia, like Matt alluded to before, if you don't agree, then you know you're the worst thing ever, and I hate you, and I have a right to be able to do that. That's not healthy. You have to be able to learn how to disagree with people who have different ideas with you, and mm. and again, that's what we want to try and foster through this podcast as well is to to help people to like i said before disagree but know why and you know how to disagree in a healthy way because that's part of being a human mm. <laughs> you have to learn right. it, you know <laughs> yeah. basic yeah yeah we will have none of that <laughs> <laughs> well guys i've really enjoyed this conversation i like the way it's flowed man we um we hit on a bunch of different things along the way. And it's just so, like we, we treat the show, just have conversations and folks eavesdrop in and, and they can pick the parts they like, and the parts they dislike. And I think people are going to enjoy this conversation. I'd like to get y'all back on sometime and maybe we can continue this. Cause I think we could probably talk for another hour, but I don't want to keep y'all that long. And <laughs> I got some stuff. I, I got to go finish laundry and stuff this afternoon anyway. Yeah, yeah, those, those pesky life chores. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. 
Uh, but before I let y'all go, why don't you tell folks where they can find your show at, and then uh, they can go check y'all out themselves. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell them. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we we do have a Facebook. Um, it's just Facebook forward slash Way of Life Podcast. Um, and we're on YouTube as well. Just search for Way of Life Podcast. Um, all our episodes are there. Um, yeah, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, pretty yeah. much every podcast platform. Just yeah. Way of Life Podcast. Awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We'll keep it up. I'm going to encourage y'all to keep going and keep doing it and uh, get out there and help folks start thinking for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. I'll talk to y'all soon. Much either. It's it's very 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 much either.